Well, I just had something shitty happen. I was just going to go, well, I was just doing the beginning of my Tech 53 brake uh, debugging road trip, and um, I was getting this nasty clunking in the steering wheel. I thought, oh, must have done something with the calipers. Maybe didn't install it correctly. Anyway, the uh, ball joint uh, in the control arm on the both the driver's side and the passenger side were loose. So I went, pulled the wheels off, pulled the control arms out, and tried to tighten those nuts up, and they were Swiss cheese. They just were like spinning. Uh, threads dissolved. So um, I don't remember where I bought those control arms, but uh, they're metric M7s, and um, I'm going to have to get some proper ones, some 10.9 uh, grade bolts. Um, it said 8.8 on them, but uh, they were they were junk, so a little scary. Anyway, I've temp put some temporary bolts in there. I don't have some M7s, so I threw some M6s in, and I will not throw this car around too much, but I will do some basic brake tests. So, anyway, we'll give it another whirl and see uh, see if I can actually uh, uh, get some testing done here. Closing. Make sure it closes all the way. It's been known to go back up if something's in the way. Okay, it's closed. So. After a lot of fooling around, it turns out that the noise going around the corners may, I'm not sure about this, but it may have been the rubber boot uh, binding against itself. Um, I just had to put some silicon um, protectant on the rubber boots and then I think as they pinch, they, 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 they bind a little bit. But um, we'll see. I've been driving around a little bit without any, any sound. Um, it's raining today, but whatever. Um, testing the new brakes out, and I'm not sure. I'm not going to go too far from home, but I'm, I've driven around 20 blocks so far without having any major nightmare scenarios with the brakes. So, um, and I'm not getting that clunking sound around the corners. Although I was doing some hard braking and I was getting a little bit of a little bit and I may have gotten some crap in the brakes. There's a lot of sand in the uh, on the roads right now here. And uh, you know who knows it'll get between the, the rotors and make a mess of things. I'm just gonna scoot around the back streets here. Apply the brakes. 
Yeah. And the bigger the bigger uh, pistons definitely grab firmer for a given amount of brake pressure. The, the car stops uh, with authority. I definitely have a bit more pedal travel. Um, it's not a huge amount more, but I would say I probably have to push the pedal almost an inch further. Um, I may need to bleed, bleed, bleed them one more time. I was just doing gravity bleeding where I was, oh by the way, there's a huge tree, tree branch that just fell here. I got to drive through all the broken bits. But you know, comparing these 288 race cams on an ITB intake, an independent throttle body intake, comparing them to the uh, the nasty sound you get with the single OEM plenum, lock plenum, where it barely idles. I mean, this thing, I'm just bobbling along at 1500 RPM and it pulls, you know, it uh, it's, it idles, it's, it's just, what a difference having a, you know, the independent throttle bodies, even though they can be a little bit non-linear and they grab, you know, you, you crack the throttle blades a little bit and all of a sudden you're into the power band. Uh, but, uh, not power band, but it, it, you, know, you dip the throttle just a tiny amount and the car starts to pull. But despite that slight non-linearity, it sure makes big cams uh, behave a lot better. Excuse my terrible driving. You gotta be careful when you get into that sort of take your foot off the throttle if you haven't pushed the clutch in all the way you'll get that uh, your foot shaking and that that'll put the throttle uncontrollably and you get that stuttering so you gotta kind of live with the fact that uh, ITPs are quite sensitive that way but yeah no it feels brakes are feeling good I'm, as I say I'm quite cautious about getting too far from home in case something bad happens but so far oh I love the growl Let the rear proportion. Oh, see if you that. See if you that grind sound. And then it goes away. That's interesting. I wonder what caused that. That was after a heavy braking. I may just need to set the pads a bit. See if you getting that sound again? I don't know if you can hear it. See, there's the sound. It's going, it's coming. Hmm. Anyway, it may be part and parcel of settling the brake pads and sort of got that sound of the rotor going around and rubbing on something. As I say, there's a lot of crap on the road. I don't have any brake pad shields or brake. Um, rotor shield so any shit that gets thrown up basically is you know right into the into the brakes unfortunately so it's not great driving around with wet road conditions like this anyway so there you go I'm signing off for now taking the car back home giving it a wash and uh, calling it a day